The Golden West Radio Network presents Crisis. Suppose the unthinkable finally happens. Suppose man's technology finally defeats him. And the arsenals of weaponry that were devised to make another war out of the question were finally unleashed. This has been a favorite theme for science fiction writers for more than 30 years now, ever since man proved himself capable of wiping humanity from the face of the earth. If, God forbid, such doomsday ever does come to pass, surely there will be survivors, a few at least. What manner of person will be able to survive in a world that has been utterly devastated? This question forms the substance of tonight's tale of crisis. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. Oh, I'll see if this thing works. Testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. And yeah, I'll see if this thing works. Okay, good. Now, I'll get some batteries here. Extra batteries. Okay, got those. That'll do me for a while, anyway. Now, I think I'll try this phone. I need a little, uh... No, it's dead. It's dead like everything else around here. Except me. Gotta be somebody else. Somewhere. Hello? Hello? This is Joe Nelson. This is Joe Nelson. And I'm alive. Tonight, Crisis brings you Robert E. Lee Hardwick as... The Survivor. I give him about 24 hours before. Before I won't be able to stand it. When the weather gets warmer, I mean, forget it. I can't bury the whole population. Not alone, I can't. And that's what I am. But you know, I am the richest man in the world. I can take whatever I want, anything. Hey, Nelson, how would you like a little jewelry, huh? All right. There, now you just help yourself, Mr. Nelson. Oh, a nice selection. Yeah, but what good is it? You can't eat diamonds. You know, that was really dumb, Nelson. Really dumb. I mean, you're two hours out of the vault and you're acting like a savage. Now think, think. You collect what you gotta have before this town starts stinking. Yeah, get a truck. Yeah, a truck. And I'll fill it up and we'll head for the country. Wait a minute. I see something move. Hello? 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 Oh, no. Nothing. There's a guy's coat flapping in the wind. Well, they all died pretty quick. I wonder what kind of gas it was. A nerve gas must have been. Now, oh, come on, Nelson. Get with it. Find yourself a good truck with plenty of gas and get out of here. Have a storm. I wonder what the weather forecast. <laughs> I gotta be my own weatherman from now on, I guess. Yeah, let's see what I got in the truck. I got about uh, 20 cases of canned stuff, powdered milk, I got some blankets and boots, and uh, some gloves, flashlights, batteries, a lantern. I don't know what more to get tonight, and it's getting dark. And it's gonna storm. Ooh, you know, this is one dark city with no lights. No TV, no radio. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What am I seeing in that appliance store? I'm getting sick of the sound of my own voice. You know what I need is some, some music. Yeah, mm, here we go. Sale, it's, uh, it's portable tape recorders. Yeah, hey, right. Yeah, well, this one's a beauty. It runs on batteries, and I got enough batteries to last me as long as, <laughs> as long as I live. How long that's going to be. Okay, okay, now, what kind of music do I want? Let's see what they got here. Ooh, the store was doing pretty good business when the gas came, I guess. I can't hardly walk through the place. There must be 20 or 30 bodies in here. I'll grab some tapes and let's get out of here. Let's see. Old favorites, this one says. Down memory lane. 
Every song in the world is going to be memory song for me from now on. Well, I'll just take one of everything I can carry, I guess. Oh, man, is it going to rain. I'm going to find me a nice empty park or something and get away from all these bodies. I'm going to crank up a little music and try to keep them going nuts. There, that'll do. The university campus, I think. That's a nice open place. Man, when it gets dark, it gets dark. There's not a light. I wonder why the streetlights don't come on. I thought they came on automatically. Hmm, maybe not. Well, the storm's over anyway. I'll put the tape recorder on here. Can't even see what the music is. Hey, why don't I put this up on the hood of the truck and I'll build me a nice little cooking fire. Yeah, that's... Okay. Now, let's see what we get on him here. Uh... Button. Oh, yeah. Strangers in the night. Oh, yeah. <sighs> well, that wasn't such a bad dinner. Of course, the beer was warm. Just keep on singing, Carly, so I can find my way back to the truck. I want to see if there's a nice, cozy place in one of these buildings where I can sleep. Some place where nobody's, well, where there wasn't anybody else. Huh? Who's, who's there? Anybody there? I swear I saw something move. Is there anybody there? Oh, by that doorway, something, something moved. <laughs> it can't be. I'm, I'm the only one who lived through this whole thing. So I was sealed in a vault with its own air supply. So, what's... what's out there? You are listening to The Survivor on Crisis. We'll be back in one minute. Joe Nelson survived Armageddon through the luck of being in a hermetically sealed vault with its own air supply when war erupted on the earth, a war that ended with a lethal gas attack that wiped all life off the continent. Or did it? Is there anybody there? I know you're there. You're in the doorway of that building. Look, my God, we shouldn't hide from each other. We need each other. I'm coming to that doorway. Hello? A, a girl? A girl? I don't believe it. What, uh, what, what are you doing here? Well, I heard your music. I've been listening. You've been listening? Do you realize what's happened? Yes. I mean, there the, was a war. Was some kind of gas. Yes, I know. But how did you live through it? Well, I'm not quite sure. Well, how did you? Well, I work in this microfilm vault, you see, mm-hmm. the big one that's about 3,000 feet under the mountain. Oh. I'm the night maintenance man there. And three days ago, we go into emergency power and air, so I, I knew something happened up topside. I, I stayed down there as long as I could before the air went stale, and then I came out. I figured it must have been a hydrogen bomb or... What's your name? Uh, Sharon. Sh- Sharon. Mine's Joe, Joe Nelson. Hello, Joe Nelson. Oh, that sounds so great. Just to hear another human voice. Talk to me. Tell me about yourself. Let me hear you talk. What shall I talk about? Anything. Recite the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> oh, she could laugh, too. I didn't think I'd ever hear laughter again. See, that's why I play these tapes, because the silence was getting to me. I honestly don't know how much longer I would have been able to take it. Your name is... Sharon. Yes. Sharon. <laughs> Come with me. I've got a truck. I loaded it with everything I thought I'd need to survive. You can share it. You can have anything you want. Will you, will you come with me? Yes. Yes, Joe Nelson. Of course I'll come with you.
I've been talking all night. Hmm. Looks like the sun's coming up. Aren't you tired? Not really. I enjoy hearing you talk. Well, now, you got to tell me about yourself. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do I want to know? <laughs> everything. Everything. But are you a student? No, I-, I was an assistant to Dr. Miles Engel at the university. What did you do there? Well, he was working on Sensapian projects. Sensapian? What's that? Well, uh, robots. Only very advanced robots that can perform specific functions without monitoring. Oh. Kind of like those machines that uh, assemble cars, you mean? Kind of. Only they really synthesize human functions. That's where they got the name for them. Sin for synthetic and sapien from homo sapien. Homo sapien? Man. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, only our models could be taught complex functions and then put on a job and never supervised. Uh, at least that's what we were trying for. Well, what were they going to use them for? Well, any number of jobs where it was too dangerous for a human to be. Radiation, microwave fields, toxic fumes, that kind of thing. I didn't know that. Well, Dr. Engel is one of the... was one of the best men in the country. Well, I got myself a real egghead. Egghead? I don't understand. Well, uh, you. I mean, you're a brain. (laughs) Well, thank you. Joe? Hmm? Why do we have to go out into the country? Well... You see, the way I have it figured, it's the only place we can survive. The cities are loaded with dead people. There's too many to bury. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have talked about it. Oh, it doesn't bother me. You sure? Well, okay. You've got to realize, in the cities right now, all the services are out. I mean, the light, the water, the gas, the sewer. You can't operate a whole city with just two people. Oh, I see. See, so I figured our best bet is to settle down in some little farm in the country, away from the pollution. There's going to be epidemics in the towns and diseases and plagues. Why? Why? Well, uh, wait till the rats get loose on all those... Hey, wait a minute. No rats. No bugs. No flies. Well, not at first. But the gas that killed the animal life may not have killed insect eggs. Mm, mm, I didn't think of that. See? See? You are a brain. <laughs> no. Well, you're marvelous to calmly reason out what needs to be done. Oh, Joe. Do you think we can make it? Hey... Hey, we got to make it. It's very quiet, isn't it? Yeah. No crickets. Yeah, no birds. No dog barking in the distance. Damn them. Who? And they killed all the dogs, too. Who do you suppose did it? Which nation? Yeah. I don't suppose it really makes much difference now. Hey, I just thought of something. If there is any life left on Earth, I mean, besides us, maybe somebody's on the radio. Yeah. Do we have a radio? Yeah, in the truck. Listen, Joe Nelson's truck has got everything. Joe? Yeah? If, if there are others somewhere, are you sure we want to contact them? Well, sh- sure, why not? Nothing. Hey, we got to find out. All right. Okay, here goes. Down. No, I'm tuning up and down the dial. There's nothing on the air. Are you, uh, glad we're alone? Yes. Aren't you? Yeah, but I'm not alone. I've got you. Joe! Joe, where are you? Down in the cellar. Well, come up. What's the matter? Nothing. Just come up. Yeah, what's up, honey? Uh, Come outside with me. Outside? Well, Hurry. Don't tell me you found something wrong with this house we picked out. It must have cost at least... Oh, the house is wonderful. Now, listen. What? Well, don't you hear them? What? Birds! The birds are back! That's right. I I hear them. How could that be? Well, the gas that killed everything else didn't penetrate the eggs. And the sunshine must have hatched some of them. Wow. You know what that means? Chickens! (laughs) Woo-hoo-hoo-wee! <laughs> you like chicken? I love chicken. Fried chicken and dumplings, chicken cacciatore, eggs, omelet. I love chicken. you love chickens more than you love me? <sighs> Honey, did I ever tell you, even if you hadn't been the only girl in the world, 
I'd have fallen in love with you if I'd seen you in a crowd. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> you know, we make a great team, right? <laughs> I think so. I mean, your brains and my muscle. That, wait, that reminds me. I was checking our food supply. Honey, I'm going to have to go back into town at least one more time before our first crops come in. Why? Well, we need some batteries and a lot more canned goods. But you said, well, the city's... I know, I know, I know. I'm just going to have to tough it out. It's been months since it, since it happened. Maybe it won't be so bad now. Oh, but there could be rats. And there's sure to be insects. Joe, well, I just thought of something. What? Our robots, our sensapiens. Well, what about them? Well, I could program them to, to clean out the city. You're kidding. Well, they're all right there in the university. They work day and night. They do what they're programmed to do. And they don't quit until there's nothing else for them to do. Or until they need recharging. Well, what do they run on? Energy cells. And you know how to make them work? Well, that was part of my job. How many are there? Well, let's see. We'd have to use the older Type C models. They're not as sophisticated as the Type Ds, but they're well proven. Can we get them going? Oh, it's worth a try. It's in this room right down here. Son of a gun. There they are. Right where they were when I saw them last. They look almost human. Well, they have to do human jobs. And believe it or not, we determined that two arms and two legs and five-fingered hands with opposed thumbs were the most practical design to live on the earth. Well, come on, let's get them started. Well, Professor, you've got your dummies all working? Well, they're not dummies, dear. Hmm. They're highly refined, solid-state, dependable, synthetic servants of man. <laughs> You could really use the language, babe. You know that? No. It's just that I've been through the development of the Sensapiens. Well, if the war hadn't come, the world could have looked forward to a time when there would be no hunger, no poverty, no hard work ever again, or no dangerous jobs. Oh, it would have been heaven. With zillions of these robots doing the drudgery. Well, yes. The Type Cs would do the menial work, and the Type Ds would take over the mathematical routine work and the skilled assembly jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, they would have been nurses, teachers, pilots. So, uh, what happens to us humans? But you don't understand. The Type D was going to free humanity to do what it does best, to be creators. Oh. But now, the Sensapiens outnumber the humans. Yeah, and shouldn't we send these, uh, these robots out to start cleaning up the city? Yes, we're all ready. Type C unit, commence as directed. That's weird. That's weird. They move almost like humans. Yes. They were very close. Dr. Engels would be glad to know they're serving mankind at last. <laughs> you really liked Dr. Engels, didn't you? Well, he taught me everything I know. Well, hey, it's a nice afternoon. Yes, lovely. We don't have anything to do, right? No, not now. Let's get out of this place. That's too many bad memories. I should have realized. Come on. Oh, no, that's all right. It doesn't bother me. Well, it shouldn't anyway. Well, then come on. Come on. All right, dear. Hey, uh, are you all right? Certainly, Joe. Look, honey, all I want to do for the rest of my life is to make you happy. You know that? I know that, Joe. And all I want to do is to make you happy. Well, that's what the type Ds were here for. Just to make you happy. Are you happy with me, Joe? Oh, Joe, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want this to happen. I'll be back in a minute with a word about next week's production of Crisis. The Survivor featured Robert E. Lee Hardwick and Debbie Baker and was written and produced for radio by yours truly, Jim French. Sound created by Warren Berry and engineering by Carney Barton. Crisis is produced at Audio Recording Incorporated for the Golden West Radio Network.